By this time, the Romans had considerable experience dealing with barbarians. They could civilize the raiders to some extent by offering them otherwise useless land on the Roman borders as a token tribute. Before Attila, this tactic seemed to be working on the Huns, who settled on the Danube River Valley. All that changed when Attila seized command. He was much more aggressive and unpredictable than the previous Hunnic kings. He demanded that the tributes from Rome be increased, and when the Romans refused, Attila marched on the Eastern Roman Empire. He marched on the great city of Constantinople, whose double walls had never fallen. Attila was done with raiding. Now the Huns advanced slowly, eradicating everything in their path. The Romans would reinstate the tribute, or they would be destroyed. Hey, 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 hey,
Underestimated the defenses of Constantinople. We are not equipped for a direct siege, though perhaps we can destroy their docks. Saza, people's boy. Suite, Time, Suite, Suite, people's boy. Saza. The searching for four hatching. are disrupting our train routes. Take this gold and be gone.
Who was this man, I asked, to threaten the Roman Emperor? Titles such as Emperor meant nothing to Huns. Attila was not an appointed ruler, only the strongest among the Huns. The amenities of his office meant nothing to him. While his chieftains and council ate off of silver plates, Attila's own plate and goblet were hewn from simple wood. His Scythian guards had jewels on their sword hilts, and their cloaks were clasped with gold. But Attila showed no such affectations. He was interested only in conquest. Some said that he was trying to build a legacy to rival that of Alexander the Great. All of the barbarians wanted to possess Rome, as if it would buy them instant legitimacy as a world-spanning empire. Unlike most of the other barbarians, however, Attila was actually going to get his chance. Thank you. 